Hi, I'm Shelly Wood. You might know me from ShellyWood.com. Welcome to my tiny sewing room. I'm best known for my doll clothes sewing tutorials, but today we're going to make something different. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple drawstring bag with a front pocket that fits a 3x5 note card so you can put a child's name in the front pocket. Mine will be used in a teacher's classroom, but these are also great for kids to gather candy at events like your local 4th of July parade. It's a wonderful tool for Halloween candy gathering as well. I'll be using a contrasting color of thread, which is strictly to help you see the stitches. But instead, you should probably use a thread that more closely matches your fabric and your bias tape. I'm using sturdy mesh, fabric, and one inch bias tape to make the front pocket. Craft rope or vinyl rope will be a good drawstring for today's easy drawstring bag project. Now I used some butcher paper to make myself a pattern, but wrapping paper or really any type of paper will work fine. My pattern is 15 inches wide where the casing will be and 18 inches long from top to bottom. I also drew a casing line that's three inches deep. All right, so just so you can see, I'm measuring this. It's about 18 inches the longest way, okay? And then the wide way is about 15 inches wide. The casing line will show us where to snip. So we're gonna want to mark it. Now I also wrote fold on one side because you're going to um, cut on the fold and you'll see that my casing is three inches deep. Now before you cut your fabric, you'll wanna fold it. I know a lot of people don't know what that means, cut on the fold. So placing the word fold on the folded fabric edge is going to show you where your fold is in the fabric. And then you cut around it. But you won't need to cut that edge that says fold because when we are all done and we unpin our, um, our butcher paper pattern, then when you open it up, you'll see it's all one swatch of fabric. And that's what it means by cut on the fold. Of course, those of you who've been sewing for a long time, you know this terminology. So I open it up and you can see it's all one piece. You're gonna cut two rectangles of fabric on the fold like that. Now, when I talk about keeping right sides together, this is what I mean. Okay, so you'll want the pretty side touching the pretty side of fabric. Now my red fabric doesn't have a right and wrong side, so it really doesn't matter. But the one with the circle pattern, it's got a wrong side clearly. And when I say right sides together, that's what I mean. But for now, just fold one piece of fabric in half. Lay your pattern down over the cut fabric. Move the pattern aside just a little bit. And then you're going to snip the fabric 5 eighths of an inch in for both sides of the long rectangle. Now that's going to be hard for you to imagine, so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I've got my little tape measure and I've measured 5 eighths of an inch deep. And right where my casing line is, I just snip that fabric just a little bit, 5 eighths of an inch in. Fold the snipped fabric back on both the right and the left side of your rectangle of fabric. 
and then follow these directions for both of your pieces of fabric so you're going to have one on the the lining piece too you're going to pin this snipped part down and stitch it in place so i pin it like this then i go to my sewing machine and i just run a quick stitch across that do this for all four of your snipped sections okay so your outer fabric will look like this and your inner fabric looks exactly the same. Now it's hard to tell, but there is a rectangle of mesh, some see-through mesh on my cutting board. You're gonna sew bias tape around four sides of the mesh. Now the pocket I'm making, of course, is optional. Wrap the bias tape around the mesh and pin it in place. Then stitch it sort of like a picture frame. Fold each corner in to make a diagonal seam. I think diagonal seams are pretty easy, but you could just cut four strips of bias tape if you find that easier and then create corners like this instead if you think that's a little easier. If you use a similar thread color, it will hide your stitches. Pin your pocket to one side of the outer fabric. I pinned mine about five inches from the vertical edge and six inches from the horizontal bottom edge. Now if you're not sure what's top and what's bottom, pay close attention to the snipped and sewn quarter corners because that'll be your casing. Now, when you insert a 3x5 card, your snipped and sewn corner will be up here where I'm pointing. Pin and sew along one, two, and then three sides of your pocket so that you will form a pocket with an opening. So I'm gonna sew here to here, here to here, and then here to here with the casing at the top. To make your pocket extra sturdy, you can give it a second stitch along the bottom. Lay one swatch of fabric on top of another, keeping right sides together. Sew along the edge that has been snipped and sewn. It helps to pin the fabric before you sew it. Now you're sewing from here, where we've snipped the edge, down to here. Here's that finished seam. Open it up like this and press the middle seam open with your iron. Fold it so right sides are facing out. Use a fabric pencil together with your pattern and tape measure to mark the casing line. So what I did is I just laid my um, pattern like this. I made sure that my pattern allowed for the 5 8 inch seam at the top. And then I just took a little white fabric pencil and kind of made a dashy line so I know where to sew. Place straight pins along that casing line. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting ready to sew this casing together. Stitch the casing line with the right sides out now fold your whole bag in half with the casing at the top. Stitch from the casing's edge to the bottom of the bag and then stitch all the way across the bottom of the bag. Okay, so I'm going to pin where I stitched. I'm doing this a little backwards so you can see. Clip the corners. So here's my sewn bag. 
I'm going to clip here, opposite of the casing end, and then here. Flip the bag right side out. I like to use a chopstick to help me with this. It can help you poke the corners out, but you want to do it gently um, so that it, the chopstick doesn't poke all the way through the corners. So there's my chopstick. I just gently poke those corners out and you can see that the casing is at the top. Now you'll need to cut enough cord or rope to measure the width of the bag plus a little bit more. Okay, so there's the width of the bag twice and then just a little bit more like seven extra inches or so. All right, and now what I'm doing is I'm tying a little knot or loop at the end, okay? So you cut the rope or string, you tie a loop at one end and attach a safety pin to the loop. Then you send your safety pin through the casing. And that's what I'm doing here. And again, I've got enough rope to measure all the way around the casing. I, when you saw me measuring it, I was measuring like twice the width and a little bit more like seven inches more. So you wanna make sure you have plenty um, to work with. Okay, and then you remove the safety pin and you tie a knot in your drawstring where the rope ends come together. Now when you pull on the rope, it creates a closed area at the top of the bag. And now you have a drawstring bag. For more DIY tutorials and for free printable PDF sewing patterns for making crafts and hundreds of free doll clothes sewing patterns for making doll clothes to fit dolls of many shapes and sizes, please remember to visit my website, ShellyWood.com. Hi, I'm Shelly Wood. I've been asked, how do you get so much sewing done? Well, of course, I have a trick. I use a sewing planner to help me achieve my sewing goals. And now I have uploaded it to my Etsy store. So in my Etsy store, I'm offering an editable version of the sewing planner that I use for setting goals for you to download to your phone or computer. Just type your goals into the text boxes, print it out, and pin it on your own sewing room wall, just like I do in my sewing room. Set New Year's resolutions that you can actually achieve and make changes to your planner as your goals are met. It's only a one-page planner, but you can reprint it a gazillion times and it's 99 cents.